What's going on everybody? Geekspot82. I thought today we could do a tour, a quick tour, of my 37 Commander decks. Uh, I have them all laid out here as you can see. I thought maybe I would hold up the Commander, tell you kind of what the deck does, and then if you guys are interested you'll let me know later and I can do a more in-depth review of exactly what cards are in the deck and things like that. If you do have any questions uh, leave me a comment and ask by all means if you want to know how a certain mechanic works or what cards I run with what commander and why uh, or if you have any suggestions for Ikoria which is supposed to be coming out here very soon uh, obviously it got pushed back thanks to the COVID outbreak but that's nothing we can control so we do what we can um, let's just jump right in all right so deck number one is gonna be my soldier deck uh, it is a soldier tribal deck which is why I have it in the GI Joe box right because soldiers that makes sense and it's King Darren of Keljor uh, he's a legendary human soldier he says whenever you're dealt damage you may create that many 1-1 one, one white soldier creature tokens and he is a 3-3 three, three for 6. Since we did my G.I. Joe deck we have to do the Cobra deck next right? So see the Cobra deck box right and that is the commander for this one is Damia Sage of Stone she's a legendary Gorgon wizard she's a 4-4 four, four for 7 uh, and that's 4 black green blue uh, with death touch Skip your draw step at the beginning of your upkeep. If you have fewer than seven cards in hand, draw cards equal to the difference. Uh, mostly in the deck, I run snakes because cobras, right? Um, so I have just about every kind of snake you can think about, and I've supplemented just a few gorgons, um, especially legendary gorgons. Uh, that way, I, I have a nice power level in there to help balance out the snakes. All right, so deck number three, we're gonna do Lord Windgrace, okay? And I, I don't know if you guys can see here, but I have every color possible of these Ultimate Guard, uh, I think they're, they're called the Boulder. Um, I bought these solely on the recommendation of the professor from Tolarian Community College. He gave these a great review, and I have to agree with him. I, Like I said, I have every color, and I have all of them in use because they really keep your cards protected, and I, I, I haven't stood on them like he did in his demonstration video, but they are a very strong deck box if you want to have your decks um, very well protected. The only unfortunate thing is you can't fit your commander in it. Uh, I like to keep my commanders in the, the hard Ultra Pro uh, card protectors uh, just so I, I can easily find them. I have a small deck box that was designed to fit these in there and that's where I keep all my commanders that do not fit in the deck boxes. So with this one, Lord Windgrace, he's a legendary planeswalker. I believe he's my only planeswalker commander. Uh, and obviously he says he can be the commander on the bottom of the card. Um, but this one's all about lands and moving them from your graveyard back into play, pulling them out of your deck, things like that. Surprisingly powerful deck. I actually really enjoy playing with this one and it's caught a few people off guard. All right, so deck number four is gonna be Geist of St. Taft. Um, this is the Judge promo. Um, one of my best friends in the world bought me this as a gift and I immediately went and built my Azorius Spirits deck around it. Um, so Geist of St. Taft is one, a white and a blue uh, for a 2-2 legendary spirit cleric. Uh, he has hexproof. And whenever Geist of St. Taft attacks, put a 4-4 white angel creature token with flying onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. Exile that token at the end of combat. Um, so again, this is, I, you're going to see a theme. I love tribal. So this is tribal spirits in Azorius. And I built this uh, with my dad, actually. And uh, it's a great deck, a lot of fun. Uh, we built these in a cycle of what we call our Halloween decks. So I did everything that I could think of, you know, ghosts, uh, zombies, vampires, spiders, things like that, so that uh, on Halloween we had a spooky deck to play for fun. So Number five is going to be Kamanatra, the god of harvest, or goddess of harvests. 
Um, so this is my legendary, uh, well, it's a legendary enchantment creature god. Uh, she is three and uh, Selesnia for a six, seven, indestructible. As long as your devotion to green and white is less than seven, it is not a creature. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may search your library for a forest or a plains card, put it in the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Um, this is, I stole this, I believe Melissa Del Toro played this, or a similar version of this on Game Nights, and I absolutely loved the idea of it, so I went and built, it is a enchantments deck, and it has just fun enchantment shenanigans. It's got a couple of engines in there for card draw, and cre creature creation, things like that. So a lot of fun. Um, it gets really big really fast, so it's a pretty fun deck to play. All right, number six is going to be my Angel's Tribal, uh, and my commander for that is Bruna of the Fading Light. She is five white white for a five seven legendary Angel Horror. And whenever I cast Bruna the Fading Light, I may return a target angel or human creature from the graveyard to the battlefield. She has flying and she has vigilance. And she will meld with Gisela to create Brucella, uh, which is kind of one of the win conditions of the deck. Um, there's a lot of graveyard recursion, angels bringing other angels back from the graveyard, things like that. Um, the downside to this is angels cost so much mana. So, and white is not great with ramp. Of course, I have my land tax in there and anything else that I can do to bring up some lands, but uh, it does take a little bit to get going, but if it goes unchecked, it will take over a game very quickly. All right, number seven, we're gonna have to go with the Hydra Tribal. So this is one I'm currently still tweaking and trying to get where I want it to be. Um, progenitus, uh, words are hard, okay? Um, so he's two white, two blue, two black, two red, two green for a 10-10 legendary Hydra avatar with protection from everything. If it would be put into a graveyard from anywhere, reveal it and shuffle it into its owner's library instead. Um, so again, Hydra fun. Uh, anything you can think of that is Hydra related or has proliferate will be in here, anything that will help me get counters, anything that will help protect my creatures. Um, you see on the back here, I've got a, a Glider Baron. Uh, he's in a different card because I, I'm not currently using him in the deck, but I wanna try to figure out a way to incorporate him in here just because I kinda like the little guy. And to me, it'd be fun to think of him, you know, controlling these massive deadly Hydras. All right, so number eight is going to be Galia of the Endless Dance. This is my Seder tribal deck. Um, this is from the Theros Death Block there that just came out. Uh, she is a 2 2 Seder for a red and a green. For, she has haste. Other Seders you control get plus one, plus one, and have haste. And whenever you attack with three or more creatures, you may discard a card at random. If you do, draw two cards. I actually haven't got a chance to play this, I just built this. Um, uh, right as you know quarantine happened and I haven't been able to get together with my playgroup to test it I am looking forward to it this is on the I, I'm chomping at the bit to play this thing but uh, I love the flavor of it I love that I was able to go back and find all those staters from the original Theros block and incorporate them so I'm really looking forward to playing this I don't think it's gonna be super powerful but I think it's gonna be a lot of fun all right, number nine on the chopping block. Arguably my favorite commander that I own is Zur the Enchanter. Um, he is a 1-4 legendary wizard that cost one and Esper, which is white, blue, black. Uh, he is flying and whenever he attacks, you may search your library for an enchantment card with converted mana cost three or less, put it into the battlefield. If you do, shuffle your library. Um, this is one I don't win a lot with it, but I love seeing the hoops that I can make the rest of the table jump through to beat me. Um, it's, it's not a super powerful deck, but it's a lot of fun to mess with other people's strategies and prevent them from doing the things that maybe they want to do or seeing how they overcome those things. So 
it's a, it's a, it's a fun deck. I really, really love playing this deck. I can't say that my playgroup loves me playing this deck, but um, a lot of fun. All right, number 10. We're making our way through these pretty quick. Is my Cleric's deck using Ravos the Soul Tender. Uh, he is three and uh, Orzov, white and black, for a 2-2 human cleric with flying. He is a lord, so other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So again, uh, think of an Orzov cleric. It's going to be in here and a lot of fun, quite powerful for a cleric deck. All right, number 11, the first commander deck I ever built. Um, still one of my favorites to this day, and it's a throwback to what made magic uh, grab me, is Elf. So uh, my commander for my Elf tribal deck is Yeva, Nature's Herald. Um, arguably there are better, there are better commanders for an Elf deck, but she was the commander I picked when I started, and I refuse to change it. I'm, I'm gonna keep her as the commander for as long as I run an elf commander deck. But she is a 4-4 legendary elf for two and two green. Uh, she has flash and when you may cast green creature cards as though they had flash. So uh, I, the reason I like that is I, I can flood the board very quickly on a whim, um, whether it's my turn, your turn, or somebody else's turn. And the elves are underrated but I, I love my mono green elf tribal deck. All right, so that puts us to number 12. We'll do the fun guys. This is a Slimefoot Stowaway. Um, and this one, I actually have an altar that I got from Is It Star. Um, check out her YouTube channel. She does some great altars. Uh, I bought this one and created a deck around it just because uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon is one of my all-time favorite classic universal monsters and uh, I just had to, had to build a fun guy deck. So uh, fungus to the mungus. Uh, it has everything in there that you can think of. Um, thalids, spore counters, um, sapperlings going crazy. Uh, I have played it a few times now. I really enjoy it and I look forward to seeing what else it can do. Um, maybe at the next GP that I get to go to. All right, so number 13, uh, Dinosaur Tribal. Thank you, Ixalan Block, Rivals of Ixalan, uh, is Gishath, Sun's Avatar. He is a 7 7 for 8, which is 5, a red, a green, and a white. He is a dinosaur avatar with trample, vigilance, and haste whenever he deals damage. Combat damage to a player, reveal that many cards from the top of my library, put any number of dinosaur creature cards among them onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom of my library in any order. Um, so I use the Enrage trigger mostly in here, but Gishath is the, uh, the way I can get as many dinosaurs as I possibly can onto the battlefield as quickly as possible. Um, a lot of ramp and a lot of big stompy creatures so this is another uh, you know a lot of people when they get into magic they like to go with green and play those big stompy creatures this was my homage to that and number 14 is going to be uh, my knight's tribal deck it is uh, my commander is Sargwen, a uh, hero of Asheville she is a 5-5 legendary human knight that costs three red white black she has vigilance menace Whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, you draw a card and you lose one life. Equipment you control have equip knight zero. Um, so this is mostly legendary knights, if I can maintain that, and just the best legendary swords I could find. So I've got, um, you know, the uh, black blade refor reforged. I've got uh, sword of sinew and steel, sword of fire and ice, things like that in here. Uh, sort of the animus to make sure I get my lands out quickly. Uh, a lot of fun to play. <clears throat> Number 15, Admiral Beckett Brass. The Pirates, again from Ixalan. Ixalan gave me some great new commanders to play with. This is just Tribal Pirates. Uh, Admiral Beckett Brass is a 3-3 for 4. 1 blue, black, red for a legendary pirate. 
Uh, she is a lord. Other pirates you control get plus one, plus one. And at the beginning of your end step, gain control of target non-land permanent controlled by a player who has dealt combat damage by three or more pirates. Uh, a lot of fun to play with. It does piratey things. It likes to steal your stuff. It likes to create gold and try to do some sneaky things to get away with winning a game. All right, number 16 is going to be Edgar Markov, Tribal Vampires. This is, I think, one of the few cards that I kept from the pre-con that came out for Vampires a few years back. Uh, but he is a 4-4 for 7, 3, red, white, black for a legendary Vampire Knight. Uh, he uses the Eminence trigger, so whenever you cast a Vampire spell, if he is in your command zone or on the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one black Vampire creature token. He has first strike in haste, and whenever Edgar Markov attacks, you may put a 1-1 one, one counter on each vampire you control. Uh, vampires are a lot of fun, sometimes a little overpowered, uh, depending on the hand and uh, the cards you pull, but uh, a lot of fun to play, and I really enjoy my vampire deck. All right, number 17 is going to be my Dragon Tribal deck. Uh, this was one of my earliest decks that I built. Uh, I built this before the Dragon Precon came out, along with the Vampire decks there. But I did use the commander from that, the Ur Dragon, as my commander. So uh, the Ur Dragon cost nine to cast. It's four white, blue, black, red, green for a legendary dragon avatar who is a 10 pin. Uh, Eminence trigger as well. As long as the Ur Dragon is in the command zone or on the battlefield, other dragon spells you cast cost one less to cast. With flying, whenever one or more dragons you control attack, draw that many cards, then you may put a permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. So similar to Gishath, um, but maybe not as much uh, free card play there. Uh, and I don't know if I said he is a 10-10. And I got this version of the commander from the secret layer drop, the Kaleidoscope Killers. Number 18, I think we're about halfway done at this point, will be Atroxus, Parader's Voice. Uh, most anybody who plays Magic in the last 10 years knows this deck. Uh, I was lucky enough to walk into a GameStop and find a sealed version. i had been looking for it for a while and just couldn't bring myself to pay the $200 at the time what it was being charged for. Uh, but I found it and now I, I run it here. Uh, this is Atroxus Predator's Voice is a 4-4 four, for four, 4, green, white, blue, black for an angel horror. She has Flying Vigilance, Death Touch, and Lifelink and at the beginning of your instep, Proliferate. So that's what this deck does. It's all about proliferation, which is uh, you can add or take away any counter anybody has. So if your opponents have a poison counter, you can add a poison counter. If you're if you want to help uh, you know somebody across the table pump up their hydra, you can add some counters, um, things like that. So a lot of fun to play. For 19 on the list will be my second favorite deck to play, Nekusar, the Mind Razor. Um, this started out as a tribal zombie deck, but you know because Nekusar is a zombie. But I have since changed it and split that, so I have a separate zombie deck, and now I have Nekusar doing what he wants to do, and that is getting as many cards in your hand as you can with stand, uh, but making you pay for it every time. And I have all the supporting cards that will pump those numbers up. So every time you draw a card, you're taking two, three, four, five damage. And uh, when you're not drawing cards, I'm going to make you mill the cards you have left. And then I'm going to lock down your graveyard so you can't use them. A lot of fun to play. Again, it's not a deck that I typically win with because usually when I pull it out, I become the target very quickly. Um, but still a lot of fun to push myself and try to see what how much damage I can do before I do get knocked out. But Nekusar, the Mind Razor, is a 2-4 for 5-2 white, black, red uh, for a legendary zombie that says uh, Nekusar counts as both a zombie and a wizard. Each player draws one extra card each turn during their draw phase. Whenever one of your opponents draws a card, Nekusar does one damage to that player. Um, this was a 
altar that I got off of Etsy. I forget the artist and I apologize, but I do try to run some altars in most of my decks. Uh, and of course I have the, the real version stuck in the back of the deck. That way if anybody has a problem with me running an altar, it's an easy swap out. But Nekisar. All right guys, we're on to number 20. I've uh, done a little rearranging to save us some time here. So we're gonna hop right in with Goblin Tribal. Uh, most people would say run Krinko Mob Boss, uh, and he is in the deck, he's part of the 99, but I found A, it's either too powerful or I get knocked out too fast and I don't get to do anything with my goblins because people know exactly who Krinko is and what he's gonna do. So instead I use uh, Pashalik Mons, a 2-2 Legendary Goblin Warrior for three, two and one red. Uh, whenever he or another goblin I control dies, deals one damage to any target. I can pay for and sacrifice a goblin, create two red goblin creature tokens instead. Uh, so I try to use the token creation from Krinko Mob Boss and the new Krinko that was printed in one of the newer sets from Ravnica. I, I forget which one, but he's in here. Uh, so I create as many tokens as I can, and then I start sacking them and killing all your stuff with them. I have a few different sack outlets. I have some other spells to make sure that once I have a nice army of goblins that I can swing in and deal double damage or hurt you for every go goblin I control, things like that. So goblins are a lot of fun. Um, and they're pretty cheap build if you're looking to build a goblin deck uh, or a, a commander deck and maybe you haven't yet. This is a, a nice one to go with because uh, the goblins typically don't cost a ton of money to get in and be very powerful. So, and you can see I have the, uh, <laughs> the ultimate guard. I, I forget the name of these, but they change color for the decks. Uh, so as I hold my hand on it, the heat from my hand changes the color. So th those are pretty fun. All right, so next on the list, Rune of the Hidden Realm. This is a Enter the Battlefield deck. Uh, so I use uh, Rune of the Hidden Realm. He's two green, white, blue for a 4-4 legendary Rhino Soldier with Vigilance and Trample. I can pay two, tap it, exile another target creature, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. So. Uh, this is a very strong deck in that it, it has a lot of tools in it that you can use to take care of just about any problem. Uh, every creature in here has an enter the battlefield effect and I have multiple ways to exile those creatures and have them come back under my control, giving me uh, a lot of utility to take care of just about any problem that arises. So a lot of fun to play. Rune. All right. Next, we will do the Spider Tribal. So like I talked about, this was part of our Halloween build that we did so that we had all the spooky uh, creatures to play with. Uh, my commander for this deck is Thantis the Warweaver. He is three black, red, green for a legendary creature spider, five, five, uh, vigilance and reach. All creatures attack each combat if able. And whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker you control, put a one, one counter on commander um, creepy crawlies every spider I could find every enchantment that gave me more spiders I could find and this is uh, one of those decks that uh, maybe not the most powerful but a lot of fun to play on theme with the other spooky decks we built the zombies the werewolves the vampires uh, vampires typically win in that battle but um, you know the ghosts things like that so we have a lot of fun playing with this one as well All right, and again, thanks to the Secret Layer series, I built a rat deck. Uh, so I picked up the the, the Secret Layer rats uh, and built one around it. I currently am running Nazumi Grave Robber as my commander, but it's more about the creatures in the 99 and pumping them up and flooding the board with rats and making them, you know, just do what rats do, eat the entire board. So. Um, Nozumi Grave Robber is one in a black for a 2-1 uh, legendary rat warrior. Uh, pay one in a black, remove target card in an opponent's graveyard from the game. If no cards are in that graveyard, I get to flip him. And once I flip him, I can then pay four in a black, 
put target creature card in a graveyard into play under my control. So I get to uh, kind of Pied Piper and steal your creatures and then make them do things for me. All right, next on the list, we're gonna do the Fairy Tribal. Uh, for my Fairy Tribal, I went with uh, Alela Artful Provocateur. She is one in Esper, white, blue, black. For a Fairy Warlock, she's a two, three with flying, death touch, and lifelink. Other creatures you control with flying get plus one, plus zero. And whenever you cast an artifact or enchantment spell, create a one, one blue fairy creature token with flying. So this is a pretty, pretty balanced fairies deck. I tried to make sure I incorporated enough enchantments and artifacts to make uh, Alela uh, as strong as possible, uh, but still stay on theme with fairies and what they do. They're, you know, they, they're mischievous little things and they like to take shiny bits from other people. So I try to incorporate that into this deck. Um, this one was completely and totally influenced by one of the people that kind of got me into Commander. Uh, he played a very strong fairies deck. This deck is nowhere near strong, but still a lot of fun to play. And uh, every time I play it, I, I think about those first few months learning the format and finding my love for the game. And so the next one is going to be the Slumbering Isle for my Kraken deck. Uh, this is a quarantine build, uh, so I haven't got to test it yet, but this is chock full of Krakens, Leviathans, Octopus, and the things that will make those creatures unblockable or return all your creatures to your uh, hand except for these creatures so that I can swing in and do massive damage. Um, Slumbering Isle is two and Simic, green blue for a 12-12 Kraken. Uh, it enters the battlefield tapped with five slumber counters on it. As long as it has slumber counter on it, it's a land, so that's nice. But whenever I cast a spell, I can remove the, one of those counters, and then it will slowly begin to become a creature. Um, again, Krakens and Leviathans and Octopus typically are big, bulky creatures. They do cost a bit more, but I have some, uh, thanks to having blue in the deck, I have some counter spells to kind of keep me in the game early, and the green... Uh, opens me up to ramp, so I'm able to really get this deck going pretty quickly, at least in theory. Again, I haven't got to play it yet, but this is another one I'm really looking forward to playing with my uh, playgroup and unleashing the Kraken on them. All right. Slivers. If you've played Magic for any amount of time, you know Slivers and you know what they can do. Uh, they're mean, mean aliens that will quickly take over a game if you let them. Uh, for my commander, I use the Sliver Legion. It's white, blue, black, red, green for a 7-7 legendary Sliver that says all Sliver creatures get one plus one plus one for each other Sliver in play. Um, so he is the, or she is, it is the win con. Um, and it, it slivers so I have every other sliver that pumps every other sliver or gives every other sliver another uh, thing to do I don't get I don't typically play this very often because it is very powerful and I try to I, I, I like to play a balanced game so unless I know my playgroup is playing some of their best decks I'm not gonna break this out um, but it is a lot of fun slivers so with that being said, my daughters, uh, one of the first decks I was asked to build was a unicorn deck, and then luckily Magic the Gathering, Wizards of the Coast, did a, a great thing and printed a, a cycle of cards to help a charity, and it happened to be the My Little Pony cycle, so I, of course, was quickly able to jump on that and make sure I had those for this unicorn or magical horsey deck uh, so it's pegasus unicorns uh, i think there are a couple of horses in here because there weren't a lot of great options for this but they love to play this i made sure and get some cute dragon shield easter bunny dragons to put on the sleeves um, so the commander for this is a white and a blue for a 2-2 princess twilight sparkle she has a legendary alicorn with flying, other alicorns, horses, pegasus, ponies, and unicorns you control have plus one, plus one. You can pay white, blue, black, red, green, 
And if you control Applejack, Fluttershy, Pinkie Pie, Rainbow Dash, and Rarity, every pony wins the game. So it, it's a, kind of a group hug deck in that sense, but uh, she, my, both my daughters enjoy playing it. Um, this was actually meant for my youngest daughter, uh, just because she still uh, likes some of the cutesy stuff. My older daughter has gotten into playing some of the other decks that I've already mentioned um, and doing things to push herself and grow as a Magic player. All right, so that leaves us with the Ultra Pro Alcove boxes. These are specific to their guilds. There are 10 of them to coincide with the 10 guilds, as you can see. And we'll start with Rakdos, and the commander for my Rakdos Demons deck is Rakdos the Defiler. He is a 7-6 legendary demon that costs two, two black and two red, but he has flying and trample. Whenever Rakdos the Defiler attacks, sacrifice the non-demon permanents you control, round it up. You, whenever Rakdos deals combat damage to that two-way player, that player sacrifices half the non-demon permanents they control, round it up. So the trick is, don't run anything that's not a demon. Uh, so this is chock full of demons. Uh, of course, there are some artifacts and some enchantments, things like that in here, but they are not the win condition for this deck. Um, very evil. So again, this would be a good one to play with our Halloween theme deck, I think. Uh, this was built after Halloween last year. Um, so we'll see how it does compared to those. I haven't played it against them in hindsight, but that is the Rakdos deck. So then we move into Selesnia Kitty Cats. So uh, like a lot of people, I bought that cycle of the Vampire Dragon, Wizard, and Cats commanders. Um, this is one of the few that I just took the pre-con and added a couple of upgrades and it runs fantastic. So uh, the commander for this is Arabo Roar of the Wild. He is three and green white for a legend or a five five legendary cat avatar with eminence at the beginning of combat on your turn. If he's in the command zone or on the battlefield, another target cat you control gets plus three plus three until the end of turn. That's a very strong trigger. Um, and whenever another cat you control attacks, you may pay one a green and a white. If you do. It gains Trample and gains plus X plus X until the end of turn where X is its power. Now that one you have to be on the battlefield for that to be able to um, come into effect. But uh, the Cats deck is a lot of fun to play. I added uh, you know, just a couple of upgrades to it. Um, a couple of Ajani Planeswalkers to uh, really flavor that deck with as many Kitty Cats as I can. Go with... Gruel. My Gruel commander is Ulrich of the Kralin Horde. Uh, he is a 4-4 legendary werewolf creature. Um, he costs 3 and red-green. And whenever this creature enters the battlefield or transforms into Ulrich of the Kraken Horde, Kralin Horde, target creature gets plus 4, plus 4 until the end of turn. At the beginning of your up, each upkeep, if no spells were cast, transform this card he transformed into Ulrich uncontested alpha a 6-6 werewolf um, and whenever this creature transforms into that you may have it fight non target non werewolf creature you don't control uh, so this is uh, the werewolf deck I spoke about earlier again this was part of our Halloween commander build series we did and uh, a lot of fun to play on Halloween with the other spooky decks just to, you know, have fun with it, have some candy, drink, uh, drink some soda, and watch some scary movies while we're playing Magic. All right, we'll just keep working down the line. So our Galgori commander is Hapatra, Vizier of Poisons. Um, I know what you're thinking, she creates a lot of snakes, but I will explain. Uh, so she is a green and a black for a 2-2 legendary human cleric that whenever she deals damage to a player, you may put a minus one, minus one counter on a target creature. Then, whenever you put 
one or more minus one minus one counters on a creature, create a one one green snake creature token with death touch. Yes, she is in the snake deck, but this is my poisons deck. I, I don't typically use poison uh, as a win con, but I decided to run one deck with it and put everything I could into it. And when I pull it out, you know what time it is. You got 10 poison counters before you're knocked out of the game. And this will do everything it can to get you there as fast as possible. So a lot of fun to play. Uh, a lot of feel bad plays though. Um, so moving on, our Azorius uh, deck is a tribal uh, for Sphinx. Not super strong. Uh, this was uh, my 12 year old wanted a Sphinx deck and I couldn't think of a better way to incorporate this Azorius in, or you know, find a commander for the Azorius deck than a Sphinx deck, so it worked out. Um, it is a 6-6 six, six for two, two white, two blue, for Azor the Lawbringer, a legendary creature Sphinx. Um, with flying, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent cannot cast instant or sorcery spells during that player's next turn. Whenever it attacks, you may pay X plus X and a white and two blue if you do gain X life and draw X cards. Um, she loves to play this deck. She has gotten very good at playing this deck. I've played it against quite a few of the other decks I control um, that are on a similar power level and she, she wins about half the time with it. So it's a lot of fun for her. I personally haven't played this one, but um, like I said, she really loves it. So we keep it around. All right, so the Boros deck. Um, the Boros deck is about to change. I was running Firesong and Sunspeaker, who are a 4-6 for four, four, a red and a white, for a Minotaur Cleric. Red instant and sorcery spells you control have lifelink. Whenever a white instant or sorcery spell causes you to gain life, uh, Firesong and Sunspeaker deal three damage to target creature or player. Um, and this is a fun deck, but it didn't feel like a Boros deck to me, so I don't know what I'm going to change it to just yet. I am open to suggestions if you have a great Boros deck that you're running and think I would enjoy, by all means let me know. I would gladly take any suggestions. Um, I ha I've played this maybe three or four times. I didn't have a great deal of fun with it, so that's why I'm going to be changing it, but I haven't yet, which is why it's in the video. All right, so for Is It, I'm using, I take it back. Earlier I said Wind Grace was my only Planeswalker commander, I take it back. Sahili the Gifted is the other. Uh, they came from the same cycle of Precons. Uh, but this one's all about artifacts and artifact shenanigans, using those to my advantage. So she is a two, a blue and a red for a legendary Planeswalker, Sahili the Gifted. All right, last three, we're gonna go with Simic. This was another, this is probably the third deck I built ever. Uh, and it has evolved over time, but my current commander for it is Kamina, Tyrant of Oraska. This is the Merfolk Tribal. Thank you, Professor, for turning me on to the Merfolk. It is a one, a green, and a blue for a two, four legendary Merfolk Shaman. Tap another untapped merfolk you control. Kamina, Tyrant of Araska, can't be blocked this turn. Tap three untapped merfolk you control, draw a card. Tap five merfolk you control, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each merfolk you control. Um, so this is just merfolk fun in Simic. Uh, there are some other great merfolk that I would love to be able to run in here, but they haven't printed the commander I need to run all the colors of the merfolk but beggars can't be choosers. Uh, a lot of fun to play. The board state gets huge and crazy and there's so many triggers. Uh, I really enjoy playing this one. This is a, one of my all time favorites that I own. Last two, um, we're gonna go with Orzhov. Um, so for my commander for this is Odzabat Ghost Council. It cost one, two white, two black for a five, five spirit advisor. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses two life, and I gain two life. If 
the beginning of your end step, you may exile it. If I do return it to the battlefield under my control at the beginning of your next upkeep, it gains haste. Uh, so this one just keeps bouncing in and out. So the theme for this deck, and this was the first of the guilds that I built, I did every gold bordered Orzhov card I could get my hands on, and then I picked the best with the most synergy. Um, so currently there are no other cards in here except gold bordered Orzhov cards, obviously land cards I can't get away with, but uh, I've tried to keep all enchantments, all spells, anything uh, Orzhov related, even the artifacts I'm using, I believe are just the talismans, the clue stones, things like that to make sure that it, it stays on theme. Not the strongest deck, uh, but as every set gets released, I get to usually find maybe one card to upgrade or hopefully upgrade this deck. But I, I love the theme that I picked for it. It's kind of an oddball theme, but a lot of fun uh, to, to work with and see what I can do in any given game. And then the last one, number 37. Gisa and Garof, uh, Demir Zombies. So, Gisa and Garof cost two uh, black and old blue for a 4-4 legendary wizard couple, I guess? Brother and sister? I don't know. I don't know the lore. Are they brother and sister? Uh, but when they enter the battlefield, put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. During each of your turns, you may cast a zombie creature card from your graveyard. Um, so, this wants you to put stuff in your graveyard and then cast it for... Uh, you know, whatever it costs. Uh, I do have Rooftop Storm, so usually that's zero, thankfully. Um, but a lot of reoccursion, a lot of zombies, a lot of graveyard shenanigans. Uh, a lot of fun to play. I enjoy it. Um, thanks for hanging out and watching the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the other videos. I will be doing an unboxing of Ikoria once it gets released. I picked up a box and the bundle as well as all the Commander pre -con. so I, I'm going to try and do all of them in one time and have a, a, a great big fun video to talk about. But um, let me know what Commanders you liked, which ones maybe you'd like to see more of, and if you have any uh, secret gem cards that maybe I didn't think of for any of these decks, let me know. Until then, I'll see you guys. Hey guys, I just wanted to say thanks again for watching my video. Make sure you hit that notification bell and the subscribe button and check out this latest video I have for you.